Well, good morning. I just wanted to start by um, thanking everyone, whether you're uh, overseas, online, or in the building, just for the kindness showed to my family. It really touched our hearts through gifts, text messages, lifts, and everything. Oh, it means so much to us. Um, Psalm 20, verse 7 says, Some trust in horses and some trust in chariots, but we trust in the Lord our God. And this really is a word that's very powerful to me. Um, basically, the, the, I just can't believe how life just turns around, you know, how one minute you're here and everything's it's all going fine, and the next minute it's so different. And this is really what's happened to me. And just taking you back on the... Um, 6th of uh, February, I was walking around my house, it was a Sunday, and I had a real urge just to pray for uh, your five senses, you know, touch, taste, smell, quite a strange thing that really, isn't it? But I just felt led by the Holy Spirit, and I particularly prayed that God would preserve them. And little did I know what was going to happen, and the 8th of February, the Tuesday, um, my Bible read in the morning was from Matthew 4. Uh, verse 4 which says man cannot live on bread alone but the word of God and I was just I was closing my eyes just praying about this just in the bathroom and um, I had this vision come to me I don't really get many visions but I'll get some and the um, vision was forgive me it was me laying down on the ground covered in blood and it just shot me and I kind of went Whoa. I thought, Lord, uh, what's this about? And I thought, but Lord, whatever happens to me, I pray you will get me through it and you'll be with me. And I went off to work. I'd teach people to drive. I, I didn't think anything of it. I'd forgotten about the vision I'd had. And I'd had a cancellation. And uh, my wife, Jenny, and myself, we went out for coffee at Costa on Portland Road, the top of Westbourne. And I picked up the coffees. And um, it was about 5 to 10 in the morning. And I was about half over the road, and I saw a car coming from the left at quite a high speed. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm quite good at judging car's speed. I've been teaching driving for 35 years, and he was going close on 40 miles per hour. And I started to run as much as I could, and I know I got 90% over the road, and I don't remember the next bit. I was knocked over, I was unconscious. And um, I came around fi about 15 minutes later with everyone all standing around me. I didn't know where I was. I was uh, completely confused, you know. And um, anyway, I was taken to hospital, and uh, just to uh, run you through some of the things that happened to me, really, it seems like a list of, uh, like a horror story. Um, I, I, my pelvis was busted in five places, my uh, hip socket was dislocated, the bottom part of my leg was completely smashed, my left wrist was broken, muscles, pu uh, muscles were pushed out of my left elbow, I had to have a skin graft and plastic surgery, skin taken out there and put into my left elbow. And I had three bones in the back broken. Um, I had compartment syndrome where your leg swells out. That was very serious. But the worst thing of all was I had a blood clot and I've had them before and I don't like blood clots. And um, they, they had to uh, put a filter through my groin beneath my heart to stop the blood getting to my lungs or it would have been really serious. In fact, they took the field trout just a few weeks ago now. It's amazing what they can do, isn't it? And I had the keyhole surgery. They put a hole through my neck and took the field trout from just below my heart. But it's incredible what they can do, isn't it? That was another big op. And um, as well as that, I broke my nose. Um, I'd had, uh, I had a head injury. And the way this head injury had affected me is um, my right ear, I was about 60% deaf in that ear. It's all right now, by the way, praise God. And, um, but short-term memory, I still get slight problems with that now, I'd say. Not long-term, but short-term, yeah. Um, it's getting better, but I'm just aware of it. Yeah, so, I, you know, many things that happen. Um, I'm sure there's other things I've forgotten to mention, what I broke. <laughs> um, but I just want to say a really important thing here is when I'd heard, when I kind of came around and I realized what had happened to me, I immediately prayed and said, Lord, I forgive the person who done it. I don't know anything about him, and I don't need to know about him, but what I do know is that he didn't show any remorse at all, yeah. But I forgive him, you know. God's better judged than what I am, you know. And I think this is very important to clear this up here, because 
in the Lord's Prayer in Matthew 6, verse 9, in particularly 15, it says, um, you must forgive those who trespass against you. And I don't know about you, but I want to be on the right side of God, you know. Um, and anyway, the, uh, I was in intensive care for eight days. I had six operations in eight days. And on the um, second day, they got me to sign some paperwork. I was having a very big operation. They were going to be doing my pelvis and my leg. And uh, they, they said to me, you know, you might have some complications here. And they said, we need you to sign this. And I said, what is it? And they explained to me, they said, there's a chance you might uh, lose like, your leg. And I said, I don't want to sign this. And they said, well, we can't go ahead and do the operation. And um, I just uh, immediately, a couple of things I'd done. First of all, I prayed um, 1 Peter 2.24 over my leg that says, through his stripes, you were healed. And, you know, I stand on the word of God. You know, 2,000 years ago, this was mentioned. And then Jesus said on the cross, Amen, it is finished. And I stand on this healing word of God on my leg. And I said, OK, I signed the paperwork. They gave me anaesthetic. And it seemed as though it had gone forever till I went to sleep. And as I gave me an anaesthetic, I just started singing, Salvation belongs to our God. And I know they could hear me, but when you're in this situation, you don't really care much else, you know. And I um, obviously went to sleep, and I woke up, and they said the operation's been really successful. And I thought, oh, my leg's here. I thought, praise God. That was a great thing. And um, I'm just making sure I don't miss something out as I'm talking to you, actually. Yeah, that I was taken into the ward and uh, that, that I'd arranged and one of our friends from church for chaplains to visit me pretty much every day. And on the second day, the, the guy next to me who had sadly uh, lost his leg, I was put in 11 West, which is a, a ward where many amputees are. Yeah. The guy next to me said, oh, Andy, he said, it's great you got all these visitors, but he said, I just don't do this God thing. And I said, well, I don't know about you. I said, but I want some good news. There's so much doom and gloom in this place, which there was, you know. And after the third day, he started chatting to the chaplain. And then he started asking me to pray for him. Yeah. And when I left the ward, he took a Bible from me. I gave him a Bible. And there was another guy who gave me a similar response. And similar thing happened again. I gave him a Bible when I left, and he thanked me for it. And I had many conversations with doctors and nurses. And it's quite funny because... Um, when you're in a hospital like that, you often get a team of about uh, nine doctors and trainees come around and look at you, orthopedic and plastic surgery, everything. They bring trainees around and they say, how are you doing and everything? You know, you like a daily check and you give them an answer and then you say, thanks for your help and I want you to realise my faith in God has got me this far. And they would just give you a blank look, you know what I mean? <laughs> typical look from a medical person, forgive me saying, I don't mean that in a nasty way. Um, but, you know, when I was in um, intensive care, I remember reading a book once about a guy called David Hathaway, who's an amazing evangelist. He's probably about 90 years old now. And he was once put in prison for giving out Bibles um, in, in, in like a communist country. And he said uh, how, in his darkest days, how close to God he felt. And when I was in intensive care, I really felt the presence of God all the way through it, you know. And it says in John 14, 27, it says, um, Jesus says, my peace I give you, not the peace the world gives. And I had an incredible peace, even what I was going through. And that didn't come from me. You must be joking. It come from God. So I'll make sure I don't miss something else out. Oh, thank you so much. David just said that was the time the church were praying massively. Anyway, I was um, moved to another hospital in Lewis, more of a rehab place. And the lady, she came up and she said, I'm the sister of the place. My name's Alpha. And I said, you're in the Bible. I said to her, Revelation 1.8, the Lord God says, I'm the Alpha and the Omega. And she said, Wow. And the next day I gave her a Bible, and she thanked me for it, and she was telling everyone, and he gave me a Bible. She was really excited about it. And I gave her other Bibles there. And um, a funny thing happened. Uh, during Ramadan, there was a couple of um, Muslim nurses looking after me. They were really good. 
And I was just chatting to them, son, I hope it's a real special time for you tonight when you get together with your family and have a feast, you know, this kind of thing. And they come in one day, and I was playing that song, The Creed, that says, I believe in one God, one Father. And I had it on the iPad, playing it loud. I said, oh, come over and look at this. And they were so mesmerized, wow, looking at the words. And they were looking for about five minutes. It's quite a long song, isn't it? And they went out, and then I pressed a buzzer, and they came back, and I said, uh, why did you come in? They said, oh, I was meant to give you our medication. They just totally forgot. <laughs> they were so mesmerized by the words of the song that they forgot why they'd come to see me. And you know that the main doctor in the building there, he's a lovely guy, uh, he kept calling me Miracle Man. Even I said to him that I'm not the one who, you know, does miracles. But, you know, many doctors and atheists said to me I should have died with the injuries I had. It really is, you know, like Jeremiah 29, like God had plans for me to prosper, you know. Um, uh, just a couple more things. Uh, once I woke up about four o'clock in the night, and I was in such incredible pain, the worst pain I'd been in my life. My leg was really painful. And uh, they kept giving me liquid morphine, it just didn't get any better. And come 8.15 in the morning, I just put the television on. I was in a private room then. And there was a lady on there from Ukraine who had just been blown out of her house and she had lost everything, just had a dog in her coat. And I remember praying, saying, oh Lord, forgive me, there's me moaning about my leg. And there's this lady who's lost everything. And I said, oh, forgive me. And I said, if I could, Lord, I'd invite her in our house, you know. Not as I'd check my wife, you know. And immediately the pain just went and left me because God knew that my heart was right. But it was such terrible pain. And um, I saw, I've been seeing a psychiatrist every week, and I saw a psychiatrist two weeks ago. She's a nice lady. And she said, Andy, she said, in all the years I've been doing this job, I've never met anyone so calm and positive as you, considering what you've been through. And, and she said, I know what it is. I said, tell me. And she said, it's your faith in God, what you shared with me last week. Yeah. And you know, the other, last thing to share with you was, um, I had to go to Hayward's Heath recently for x-rays. And the man was x-raying my leg, and he said, so when did you have the accident last year? I said, it was February this year. He said, you must be kidding. He said, there's no way. I said, yeah. And I said, but I believe in God. I said, he's the one who's got me this far. Yeah. And so, you know, I just want to say to you that um, prayers for me for the future, I'd particularly appreciate. It would be one, I'd better get back to normal like I used to be. Well, I could just walk freely. And I'm in quite a lot of pain in my leg throughout the day, most of the day, really. And um, I can return back to my driving school work. I really miss it. Just part-time, you know, but I just like to go back to it. At the moment, I can't really sit behind the wheel of the car for more than 15 minutes. It gets really painful. So then they're the main prayers. But thank you for listening, and God bless you all.